you're excited, sleepy, confused, jealous. Maybe you're happy, sad, angry, calm. Join me as we hit every spot from Halloween 1978 to the night he came home. And more of the night he came home. We're also going to hit every spot from Halloween 2. The entire night he came home. You're going to need some coffee. Let's go. And that brings us over to the Myers house. Now over here at 1000 Mission Street, it's the Century House, Westland Financial Services Incorporated. And there it is. It's blue now. 45 years later, it still stands. Right in front of the Haddonfield Express or the Hardin County Express. So, six-year-old Michael Myers walks towards the Myers house. Dead of Night, Halloween, 1963. Comes over here to the living room. This first window, he looks at his sister and her boyfriend. He sees them go upstairs. He sees bedroom light go out. Makes his way around the house. Makes his way to the back door. Into the kitchen to grab the butcher knife. Michael then makes his way up the stairs into Judith's bedroom after boyfriend left. Stabbed his sister. And he came at the front door, walked down the stairs. His parents come home. Michael? So, after stabbing his sister to death, he came out here with the knife and his parents pull up from wherever they were. So it was right out here on the sidewalk, six-year-old Michael in his clown costume, holding the knife. The driveway is a few hundred yards up on the right. Michael escaped from the sanitarium and stole the station wagon. Marion Chambers was driving and they pulled up right here to the gate to transfer Michael. And Loomis and Marion Chambers pulled up here. All the mental patients were wandering around. It was actually darker, so it's pretty cool to get some light here. I've never been to this spot to see all this. 45 years after they filmed that here. Got quite a bit of light at this spot. I didn't think we'd have that. See all the barbed wire up here. Really does look like the mental institution. Hollywood Reservoir. You gotta beware of snakes around here. So be careful if you come up and check out this spot. Pretty cool though. Halloween, 1978. He's gone, he's gone from here. The evil is gone. So there it is. Escape from Smith's Grove right here. Of course, the sanitarium was not actually here from the original. It was at a different spot. You can't see that anymore. However, this was the escape scene. Loomis ran up there, right in front of where Jesse is, and Michael attacked. 
Nurse Chambers right here in the car. And she was sitting here after he had pulled away. There it is. Hollywood Reservoir, 45 years later. This is going to be a fun tour. Let's move on. Are you all right? That's all God. He's gone. The evil is gone. The evil is gone. He's evil. Haddonfield. Halloween. Right here we have a memorial bench in loving memory of Mustafa Akkad, known to the world as the godfather of the Halloween film series. Your legacy lives on. Filmed here, South Pasadena, 1978, 45 years ago. Rest in peace, sir. That brings us over here to the Strode House. She comes out of that blue door. She comes walking out of that blue door, turning this corner, and her father reminds her to drop the key off at the Myers place. Jamie Lee Curtis herself, 45 years ago, walked this. Nothing's changed here. Watch the film. That crack was there 45 years ago. It's still there today. Pretty little crack. Even the, uh, the windows up here, the design in the windows, exact same, the garages. Pretty awesome. Lori heads off this way to school. Lori makes her way to school. She comes around this corner. She takes this first little path leading her off the sidewalk. Takes that directly across the road. We're walking right where Jamie Lee Curtis walked. In Halloween 1978, most of these houses have changed immensely. She walks this way. Yeah, it's cool to recreate this, man. 45 years later. Up to Magnolia and Meridian. And we get Tommy Doyle walking down this way. He meets up with her here. The curb was actually red at that point as well. I'm sure they've touched that up, but it's right where she meets Tommy Doyle, and they continue on this way. Asks her uh, if she's coming over. Same time, same place. And he asks her, why are you walking to school this way? And she explains to him that she's dropping off a key for her father. Yes, I am. We're standing where the Myers house used to stand. Right here, it's now apartments. Myers house was moved up the way to Mission Street. We'll head there, of course. This is the original spot where it stood. So Lori actually was here when she dropped the key off. Just the two of us. This was the elementary school in Halloween. Covered it before, but they have put up this gate. However, this is the angle you get here when the bell rings and Tommy comes out of school. He smashed the pumpkin right there because of those bullies ranting about the boogeyman. This exact handrail is actually the exact same as it was 45 years ago. Pretty cool. So, he smashes pumpkin right there. And then we see Richie run down this way and meets the shape right here. Michael gets back in the station wagon here, enters the station wagon, 
pulls the right. You can see this building real well. Comes down the road. Jesse would be Tommy Doyle. Michael gets a good look at Tommy. He heads off that way. All these hedges incredibly look the exact same. I've touched them before. Beautiful. The infamous Halloween one and two hedges. This school utilized for both parts one and two. We'll cover it all. All these hedges seen just how they were, cut the exact same in the film. This was Lori's classroom right here. She would have been sitting at the back, looking out of this window as the teacher was talking. Staring right across the street. An ominous figure. There is an ominous figure over there. This house has been uh, pretty much kept the same. Even that air conditioning unit was in one window over in the original Halloween 45 years ago, which is amazing. It's too bad that this vehicle is parked here, but that's about where his station wagon was parked and that's where Michael was standing. This. This underground garage here was filled in, so that wasn't there at the time, but that's the spot right there. The shape was standing. Here at South Pasadena High School, this is where the girls leave high school. Okay, they just shot a quick scene here. Now, this is where you would see those outdoor lockers here. Of course, we know if it was Haddonfield, Illinois, it'd be too cold around Halloween to be using outdoor lockers. But you can still see those drinking fountains there. Might have been changed up a little bit. This area has changed a bit, but the girls come walking here. Jamie Lee Curtis, PJ Souls, make their way this way, talking about the dance, what they're gonna wear to the dance. And there would have been a sign right here blocking out the majority of this house. You can kind of see this house pretty well. And you get a really good view of this house over here. It's got a really interesting uh, roof design. It looked exactly like this 45 years ago. Look at the roof design of this house. You see this top part, interesting window here at the top. It looked the exact same in the shot I'm about to show you. Totally wiped out. I don't think you have enough to do tomorrow. Totally. Pretty wild. Same house. If they even know that they're seen it prominently in Halloween 1978. I think you get a good shot of this house as well. Didn't do too much shooting here at South Pasadena High School. As usual, I have nothing to do. It's your own fault, and I don't feel a bit sorry for you. Then we see the girls coming around on their way home from school onto Highland Avenue, right where you see Jesse, Lori, Linda, and Annie. Walk this way. We're just going to take you on that walk. The way home from school, Halloween 1978. Now the first tree is actually where the stop sign was. That tree's been removed. Totally. See this tree right here to the left. They saw down one of the limbs. The Michael station wagon was right there. See all that ivy is gone. And you see the red brick that was beneath it. But those are those trees right there. Michael was right there. Right here. Hate a guy with a car and no sense of humor. Stone outline of this property right here that he drives by. These trees as well. Pulled the station wagon right by here. 
45 years ago. This is Highland Street, 45 years later. These red bricks go up like that, as they did 45 years ago, and they're still like that. <laughs> so cool. You think they'd fix something like that. Here we are, 45 years later, and it looks so similar. Annie, Linda, and Lori continue to walk this way. Halloween night, 1978. And PJ Souls goes home. To, to the mama's family house, that's right. Heads into her home. Annie and Lori continue this way. It's about here where Lori saw Michael standing by the hedge. She just tells Annie, I just saw something, saw behind the hedge. And Annie walks right up. Check it for herself. Ago when they were filming this, they had a bunch of extras here, unhired extras became legends in a film, <laughs> uncredited. He also had John Carpenter letting off a puff of cigarette smoke here, which fans found out later. So 45 years ago, smoking them butts and directing Halloween right here on Montrose. Just past the hedge over to Annie and Sheriff Brackett's house find right over here past the next set of hedges at 1017 Montrose and Annie goes in and Lori's about here she's looking back all paranoid and when she turns around boom I guess everyone's entitled one good scare huh? yes sir nice seeing you sir so Lori continues on her way after being startled by Sheriff Brackett, she comes up this way, returning home. Goes over the grass this way. Take you on the exact walk she took. Comes over here. It's hard to see because it's grown up a lot over here, but you can see the house to the left of the Strode House really well. And those trick-or-treaters file out. come here anytime soon and the owner the current owners who've lived here for years completely embrace the film they leave this out you can grab the pumpkin yourself head over to the pedestal pay tribute to the film in your own way you yourself could be JLC on that unfaithful day Halloween 1978 just across the way from the Strode residence is this greenhouse that you see very prominently in the film. I like to show it because it looks green just like it did in the film. You can see it very prominently and that hedgy type archway still there. That entryway looks like a hedgy arch. Look just like that. Maybe a slightly different shade of green but that's pretty cool. Pretty cool, take it in, man. Take it in. In case the new owners don't even let you walk the path or something, this will always be to utilize. So no matter who owns this house, it's perfectly legal for anybody to come here and hang out on this sidewalk, take all their pictures. But it might not be so tolerated if you come and sit on their pedestal. I'm thinking it's gonna happen anyway. You might just have to bring your own pumpkin.
Jamie Lee Curtis sits right here. She looks down here to see these exact houses. When she looks this direction, it's actually down on North Genesee, close to the Elm Street house. Finally, we see Annie pull up over here. So where Loomis and the caretaker rolled up to go visit Judith Meyer's grave. They pull up this way, coming up like this. The cemetery hasn't changed much since 1978. And you know how to line this up because there's another stone here. It was just to the left, the Sarah Sinclair stone. In this open spot, it's pretty fabulous that they leave this open spot here representing Judith's plot. Right to the left of the Tufts. To the left of the Sinclair stone. She came home. Notice this uh, large piece of cemetery concrete back here behind Donald Pleasance and the caretaker as he utters that legendary line. He came home. Establishing shot of this monument just to the left of the South Pasadena Historical Museum. Pretty cool. Featured in Halloween, 1978. Erected in 1906, this was here way before Halloween was shot. It's wild. Featured in the film. They continue getting high. Annie and Lori come down this way, being tailed by Michael. They head this way. And Annie notices her father just up at the corner at the hardware store. <laughs> right here, there was a big sewer. It's now been covered up. Michael just pulls to the side over here. Waits patiently. Hi, Annie. Lori. Hi, Dad. And Lori pull up right here, right here. And there's an alarm going off. Someone broke into the hardware store. Charles Cyphers comes out to greet Annie here. Says, someone broke into the hardware store again. Probably kids. Because all they stole was Halloween mask, a rope, and a couple knives. It's an eatery. I've never eaten there, but if you want to, you can eat inside the hardware store. Anyway, after Annie and Lori pull off this way. We see Dr. Loomis, Donald Pleasance, come down this way. Tells Sheriff Brackett he needs to speak with him, but he tells them he'll talk to him in a minute. As Loomis is facing this direction, we see Michael pull up here. Structure still stands. It's a different color, but same old Myers house. The one and only. You got the Sugar Mint Gallery right off of uh, the back. This is pretty cool when it's open. Brings you up to the back of the Myers house. Halloween 1978, 45th anniversary, H45. Oh, look who we have, 
sitting atop that roof. Yep. Coming to this place gives you a high. You will not get anywhere else if you're a hardcore Halloween fan like me. Thank you, John Carpenter. 45th anniversary of your legendary masterpiece, Halloween. Remember at the occasion, I'm gonna come up here and pet the poles of the Myers house. Wow. Feels good. Feels real good. So, we're now over here. Parkside Avenue is right here. This is Keystone. So, after we see the girls talking to Sheriff Brackett, Annie and Lori are then down here on this road. This is way far off from Pasadena. This is actually in Burbank. So this is Parkside Avenue. It took Halloween fans a long time to find this spot. It's pretty much identical to how it was 45 years ago. 45th anniversary, hitting every spot we can. In the first two films, this all looks exactly the same. Took, uh, took Halloween fans a long time to figure out where this road was because it's so far off from Pasadena and the majority of the other spots. Yep, yeah. right before they arrive at the murder houses. They come off Keystone when she's questioning Lori and they head this way. But we just figured out the final corner they take is the first one they came around but in the opposite direction. Check out this. Here's a shot from the film. Here's them coming around the corner. This is the same little ravine here. This is this corner right here. So, you see that house in front of Lori and Andy? That's that house right there. And the address here on the curb is 2015. That's right here. It's faded. So this is the final corner they go around on their way to babysit. 2015 right there. That address is seen in the film. They reversed it. And just like it states in the 1978 film, the murders went down on Orange Grove. Where did it happen? Down on Orange Grove. Always trying to work closest to the time frame and the lighting as I can. There is some work going down right between the murder houses, but it's right about here. Lori pulls up, Annie pulled in over there to the Wallace house. And the interiors, as you see, when they enter the house for their lovemaking sesh session, they go to the living room to their right but the wall ends right there. So it couldn't have been here because the interiors of the Wallace house and the laundry house were over here at 1542. This is where they shot all the interiors. All the stuff with Annie and everything took place over here at 1542. Orange Grove. Well, if you go back there, that's the garage back there, but the laundry house was behind this house. And there's a spot in number two where Loomis and Brackett drive by this crazy tree. Still enough daylight and light here to see how crazy large this tree is. Look at it. It's like the size of their whole property. Look at that. Giant, in like, it's like a giant anaconda. It goes all the way up to the house. They kind of have to take care of that. But it looked just like this, this kind of V tree like this. You see that in Halloween 2 when Brackett 
and Loomis go by this white fence, you catch that tree. And this is where all the interiors of the Wallace house from over there were filmed. Again. How long now? So as we move up the way, you want to see me reenact the entire chase scene from with Michael and Lori, then watch my other Halloween 1978 filming locations, Real Life Pasadena, uh, Real Life Haddonfield. It's on my channel. This house here, just to the left of the Doyle house, and to the right of 1542, which were the interiors of the Wallace house, this was where Loomis, uh, the, the guy came out after Loomis shot Michael off the balcony over here at the Doyles, the guy came on the, came out, said, what's going on? Trick or treated to death tonight. And he gives him that line. You don't know what death is. And Loomis runs that way. can make out the balcony there. This is the Doyle house. And they did use the interior for the top of the stairs where she rips his mask off and then Loomis comes up the stairs and shoots him six times. Also, when Tommy and Lindsay say, you can't kill the boogeyman, and then Michael comes up the stairs, that was done here. And then it leads into the bedroom, which I can see through the house. I don't know if you can make it out on the camera, but the lights are off. I can see the palm tree through the back. That's the room up there that Michael was breaking into the closet before getting shot six times. Lori gets him with the knife and the coat hanger. That, that closet scene was up there. But all the other interior shots, the living room, everything else, were directly across the street at the house that she runs to when Michael is chasing her from the Wallace house. Lori comes this way. It just comes right over, right over to the neighbors and is denied access. Sam, please help me! Please! Can't you hear me? So, this was different, it was more open. And as Michael chased Lori this way, this fence was not here. She ran over some grass right here, directly to the neighbor's house. Asked to be helped. And they turn the lights off and ignore her. But all the interior shots of the Doyle house were all in here. Right across the street from the Doyle house is where they did the interiors, where she's denied. <laughs> we move on into part two of the story doing the ultimate 45th anniversary tour here is Wallace house 1536 the guy who was trick-or-treated to death but was still living and we have the Doyle house to the right of that the Doyle house interior which is just to the left of the Wallace house house that denies Lori during the epic chase which ensued right here across this street she ran over here, and then she made a beeline from being denied from them straight to the door of the Doyle house. <laughs> it's pretty wild here on Orange Grove before we move on. A total of one, two, three, four, five houses used between Halloween one and two. Four in the first, Five of them right here on Orange Grove from part two. Okay, back to Pasadena. It was here in the Doyle house where just at the top of the stairs, dirty shot him six times and he comes off the balcony. It was here in the Doyle house where she asks, was that the boogeyman? And Donald Pleasance responds with, as a matter of fact, it was. Then he notices Michael is gone, even though Shot him six times, and then watch part two, you actually will count seven shots. And this guy, worried about being trick-or-treated to death. He 
just, you don't know what death is. Heading into the Halloween 2 alley. Nighttime for the first time ever. Well, it's a lot more light. It's fascinating. The light's actually green, like the ominous green light in Halloween 2. direction. See the trick-or-treaters. Got the barking dog shows up right here. Myers walks this way. It's that window. You see that in the film. The X pole would have been right to the left of this pole. Just been taken down. farther up, all of a sudden you see Loomis spill out. Sheriff Brackett pulls up. Shot him six times! Michael clings to this garage here. Get himself out of sight. Shot him six times! They drive off that way. over here by this shed and he heads that way to the Elrod's yard to procure the knife. All right, a little dim now. So after Michael acquires the knife from the Elrod's, leaves the blood on the cutting board, you would think he went to the neighbor's house right to the left of the Elrods, but it's actually out here in Sierra Madre, just off from uh, Kirsten Court here on Montecito. Montecito. So we'll say that this was the Elrods. Michael comes this way after getting the knife. You hear Mrs. Elrod scream, and he just comes this way. Walking up this way towards Alice's. You can still see house is the exact same as in the film. So we got this little thing on the side of the house. Alice is informed by a friend. It's that thing you see in the film on the side of the house. It's cool to do this at night time. Alice is informed by a friend that girl got killed up the road and she says where did it happen down on orange grove orange grove which is the actual road the murder house is on in real life just off of sunset but we're here montecito 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 crescent and sierra madre and they use the interiors here too so she was talking to her on the phone right in there and michael actually made his way into the front door when she was on the phone. This exact front door. What did happen? Down on Orange Grove? Alive. That's right down the street. I know. Do they know who it was? She goes, no. They say the guy got away. And she hears a thump. It startles her. Notices that this exact front door is wide open. And it would have been right in this living room area. Hello? Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> Come out from the party here, and she reminds her that she has to give her a ride home, and she says, I don't have time. Can't you ask Eddie Lee? But he's in Russellville. It's so right after they head this way that Boombox Boy, played by Dick Warlock's son, starts coming around the tree. He knew he was taking the 
across town to Haddonfield Memorial Clinic. <laughs> The exact pole here I would have said Haddonfield Memorial mm -hmm. Hospital right there. You see the Hotel Shirley, the Haunted Hotel Shirley in the film as Michael's walking by. You see it when the ladies are pulling out there before his walk. And also, you're going to see it when the marshal is bringing Loomis away. They're driving by Hotel Shirley just like that vehicle. And this one right here. See them pass by Hotel Shirley. Dr. Loomis and Sheriff Brackett pull up right here. See the white fencing there. Ben Tramer would have been here with the Michael Myers mask. The goofy looking Michael Myers mask. And Loomis goes, I see some, I see him. He's not sure if it's him. So he pulls his gun, scaring all the trick-or-treaters. And the scared Ben Tramer turns around and starts walking this direction. Mistaken, he cuts over right about here. Get back! Get back, you pig! Oh, when he's about here, he gets struck by the cop car. It was Dick Warlock who played Michael Myers in part two, who plays the cop, and he strikes him right here, dragging his body over here to where he burned alive right here. Ben Tramer met his demise. Poor Ben Tramer. You see that house really well. That's where he starts crossing the street, all frantic, gets nailed here, and then his body is burning right here. Same place where Tommy met up with Lori that morning. Michael made his way into the back of the Elrod's house here at 716 Meridian. Pretty cool. You can see it right there. Still have the same, same uh, power box thing there on the side. Same door. He went into the back door there, got the knife. She was making the ham sandwich. The news footage came on there. Michael gets his knife, slinks out. He is now believed to be at large in Haddonfield. This is Robert Mundy, live. They're watching Night of the Living Dead. And she heard the uh, news report. Police had just found three bodies at this address, which was the Wallace house. <laughs> the whole time behind her, Michael's sitting there watching the news report. Still at large. They were watching Night of the Living Dead. Another one of my favorites. Every single thing about Halloween 1 and 2. Amazing. 716 Meridian. The L rods. By this point in the story, there's a whole crowd outside the Myers house. We return here because there's a kind of a riot going on. They're throwing things at the windows, smashing them out. 
and a police officer actually comes from this window up here to tell the kids to calm down and go home. We got uh, Officer Hunt and Loomis pull up. We get that legendary Donald Pleasance line. This is a tribe. The number was butchered. This is a wake. Also utilized in part two as the night rolled on. And you can see, uh, you can see this thing actually in the movie. Dedicated to Margaret, Marguerite Groby, it's the teacher and principal. Her time freely given. This was erected in 65. See, this was erected before the making of the film. It's in Halloween 1 and 2. But in part 2, this sticker actually represents... Uh, it's not supposed to represent it, but it's, it's a good job at representing the window Michael broke to get into the elementary school. It was in there that he put a knife in the desk. And he, uh... I think he put a knife through the sister. And on the board he wrote Sam Hain and blood. So ominous. Don, uh, Donald Pleasance. And he explains the meaning of Sam Hain. It's a Celtic word. It means the Lord of the Dead. The end of summer. The festival of Sam Hain. October 31st. He got in here. Look over here. Sister. What's this? It's gibberish. No. It's a Celtic word. After Loomis is talking to the police officer inside, we see a car pull up right out here, and it's Marion Chambers. Lori's classroom, the window he broke to get in, that was the classroom there. Garfield Elementary in Alhambra. Best to come outside of school hours, you get more time here. stuff went down with Mr. Garrett. He came down, there's the loading dock here. He went through those double doors just behind that dumpster. There's another dumpster over there. It's probably not the one the cat flew out of, but Mr. Garrett went through those double doors. He was back in there. You got the back of the hammer in the skull. Wow, this is awesome. Mr. Garrett. What's the count? I believe he says 10 so far. And in total, Myers killed 16 people that night, Halloween 1978. That's all we can really show. Loading dock, Mr. Garrett. Front doors they used with Loomis and everything were over there. This lot over here. Full coverage of the night he came home. I'd like to get in there, walk the halls like Michael, but please like, please subscribe. If you're new here, subscribe and I'll let you know when a new episode goes up. You never know what you may be missing here on the Mr. Thrasher Show. H45 tour. Done. Halloween, 45th anniversary, the night he came home. Alright, we'll see you guys next time.